Hello and welcome uh, by the Orchid Saga. And today I uh, am uh, sharing my care about the Twinkles, and I'm not alone this time. I actually I think uh, there weren't uh, as many participants as uh, this time with the Twinkles. We have a lot. So um, I'm going heading over to the Twinkles and in the meanwhile I'm showing you the names of the channels who are uh, participating in this uh, care collab. And let me uh, turn off the van as well, so you can hear me a bit better. But uh, yeah, as you can see there are, uh, are a lot of uh, uh, growers sharing their uh, information today about the Twinkles, the care information. And I'm one of them and I have my uh, Twinkles located here in my greenhouse. And I'm a grower in the Netherlands, so we have a little bit of perspective on the weather. It's uh, most of the times wet and on the cold side. I prefer a bit warmer weather, but uh, anyhow. So yeah, and I now it's a bit of a dull day, but still you can see that we have some nice uh, daylight coming in, in the greenhouse. And uh, in my, uh, my opinion, the Twinkles do really do like uh, light. Not, not very heavy light, but quite some bright light. So that can be a bit of a challenge. Not direct sunlight, but uh, giving them enough, uh, enough light. So a little bit, um, yeah, what you would uh, expect by an Oncidium uh, towards Cattleya, a little less than Cattleya light, I think. And you see three here of them. That one in the back is a small orchid. It's not a twinkle, but it uh, has uh, yeah, the size of the blooms are similar. The blooms itself, not, not much. So therefore it's joined in with the, with the uh, twinkles. But I have four of them. So this, these are three of them, and I have one on the right. We uh, will visit that one in a minute. And for those who are uh, not new here on my channel, you know uh, probably which one. I have one that makes huge spikes for a twinkle. I never had such huge spikes. This is typically what I get, and I think this is the uh, Red Fantasy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that is. Let me speak. Yeah, Red Fantasy. This is one uh, probably, yeah, I think my favorites. I do love them all, but um, beautiful reddish blooms, and they uh, have a beautiful fragrance. For such a tiny blooms, they have quite a uh, strong fragrance, but I really do it. It's very sweet, I think, very sweet fragrance. So yeah, my red fantasy. Then next to it, it is uh, basically a nameless one. It came uh, with with the uh, description of a red, brown, orange twinkle. So you can find that one. It's called red, red, brown. But yeah, it's not actually a name, I think, but it's uh, beautiful and so, so tiny. You can see my thumb next to it, thumbnail. Very, very, very tiny blooms, but so beautiful. And the amount of blooms makes the display. So uh, these um, spikes are not, not phenomenally, they can be a bit bigger, but this is normally what you get with a twinkle. But once again, we will uh, see a very large one in the middle, uh, in a minute. And this one is uh, still working on his spikes. And this one is Border Red Dark. So it's very similar to this one, but just a little bit. I think it's from memory, it's a little bit more reddish. But we will see it on my channel in, uh, well, a few weeks. Twinkles do take a heck of a lot of time to develop their spikes. So you need to be very patient with them. But then you get this beautiful display. and and the fragrance, so a, a double uh, plus, I think. I have also one of the parents, it's the Sotuanum that I have. It's right above the Twinkles. It's not in bloom, but this one is, uh, the plant itself is way bigger, but the spikes and the blooms are pretty much uh, the same size. Maybe a little bit bigger, but not much. But yeah, I really, really like the Twinkles because they stay so tiny, so if you do not have much space, you might want to add some twinkles to your collection. And I now have them growing in self-watering again. I started growing them in semi-hydroponic. Then I had them in moss. Then I had them on a mound. Then eventually I put them back. Because these are here from, from the beginning um, when I started growing semi-hydroponically. So that's about four years ago. And they struggled a lot because I struggled with the system. So, they are still here. I had a white one, but that one I lost. Sadly, it couldn't take up <laughs> with my care and, and the, in those days. But I think I improved. I think uh, we can see that the new growths are starting to green up. 
nicely again. I still have some yellow tips. That is something you see quite often uh, like this on, on Twinkles. I'm not completely sure what the case is. Uh, I see a lot of growers struggle with that. I think it's a good combination of light and fertilizer. So if you get them, uh, and of course the, the temperatures need to be, uh, there's a little fly here, go away, um, according to them. But when you have nice temperatures, nice light and nice feed, those three work all together. And so they take the feed because they have the light, etc. And that's, I think if that is all correct, you will have healthier leaves. I think that's just a, just a, yeah, my thinking process behind that. But I, uh, but that's uh, yeah, it can be a bit difficult to get that uh, right in my uh, opinion. But I think they are uh, getting uh, coming back to us again. And let me see if I can get one out. I have a cable tie here, but oh yeah, look at this. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, that's beautiful. This one was very almost rootless. Because I, oh look at that, oh yeah I'm surprised, I had no idea that this one did have so many roots already, I, I knew it had, uh, was making some new roots again, but this is uh, quite, quite, quite good for a twinkle, my best so far, I never had so many healthy roots on twinkle, so that says something I think, <laughs> let's have a look at this one, this one is tinier, and let's see if I can get it out, oh yeah we have some roots here as well, Yes. Okay, yeah, I think I'm finally getting them to be a bit happier in my care. <laughs> so yeah, they can be a little bit fussy, at least it was in, uh, in my case. If you see those that wet residue, that's not salt built up, I barely have salt built up. That's because I'm struggling with aphids and uh, yeah, basically some pests, but uh, uh, most of them were aphids. And I sprayed them with the uh, with a soapy mix, and the soap leaves that residue on uh, on uh, the surface. So yeah, a few roots here. This one is a little bit. Uh, has, I'm sorry, was I focused? No, I don't think so. <laughs> we have a root here. So yeah, we have some roots. Or we have more roots here. Oh yeah, that's that's very well. For it's not a very big one yet, but that one also makes roots. So yeah, I think. And these guys were in a very bad shape, I must admit. But now we saw the roots. So yeah, I'm definitely going to let them bloom. They can take it now. And finally, finally they are getting happier. I think because of the light. I have that bubble wrap there, but uh, the natural daylight, they really enjoy it. Once again, not, not direct sunshine, of course, but uh, quite some, uh, some nice, bright, filtered light. Before I forget, the temperatures uh, at night it's around 18 degrees here and during the day it depends. If the sun is here then we go up to 25 in winter. In summer it can go up uh, even to 30 but I have the door next to it. So I will have the door open then and this fan running so I have fresh air coming in. And, and cooler air, I don't like it, uh, the temperatures to go above 30 so I try to keep it uh, around that. But uh, that's in summer, and then it will be at night, probably 24 if it's very warm. But in general, it's 18 uh, in uh, at night, and during the day, something uh, from eight, uh, between 18 and 25, I think. Let's have a quick look. At the moment, it's 19 degrees. I hope you can see it. I think you can, with 61% uh, humidity. That's nice. I like it around 60, 65, because I grow them in water. They need not too much humidity around them because uh, I grow them self-watering. Okay, so that was a, quite a, a lot of information again uh, already, I uh, should say. Let's get over to the big one. And I have it on this table now. I put it on here for about two, three, uh, about two, three uh, days ago. I hope you can see it, but these spikes, you guys, I never had. Look at this. So, so big. It's a yellow one, I don't know if the yellow one is, it's normal for the yellow one to do this, but look at this, it's beautiful, it's very tiny, but it's, you can see it, all spikes and buds everywhere. So yeah, I had to take it off the shelf, because it was uh, uh, growing towards the 
shelf above it and go in, in all kinds of directions so I had to give it a little bit more room but I think it's beautiful I'm looking so so forward to this one uh, really start to blooming and some buds are starting to open up but sadly not uh, not soon enough for this care collab but I will film it uh, so if you are curious stay tuned <laughs> to my channel I will film it definitely but yeah this is the as you can see it's the big one, biggest one one clump of bulbs here and a few dead leaves that I take off on occasion but not much luckily most of them are still green maybe we can have a look in the pot let's try if you can see if you can find some roots not that much on this one we have some here yeah a few more roots I did uh, repot it I think about six months ago and this one had uh, quite a lot of roots but it's, those are located in the middle some are now growing to the edge of the pot but as you can see I have quite some room left here so yeah I know that this one had the most roots of all of them when I repotted it so it's fine it's making beautiful spikes it has the energy you can see the bulbs are not swiveled at all so that's also an indication that this one is really enjoying his life at the moment <laughs> and that makes me really happy of course so this is the yellow one once again I'm really looking forward that this one really starts opening the blooms and I can only hope that they start opening up all together that would be a beautiful display I think so yeah fertilizer wise um, in winter I give all my orchids I water them with the same water I don't uh, mix up separate the water because I have too many <laughs> and they get a uh, a parts per million around around 80 I think between something between 50 and 80 parts per million I will have a link to my fertilizer video so you can see which products I like to use and in summer it's something uh, in between 100 to 150 so fairly low I think I'm uh, if I'm comparing myself to the other growers I am on the low side low side of uh, parts per million I think the rest is giving them more but this suits me and I don't flush I check my reservoirs every three months if the pH is okay, if they do not have too much build up there, so if they have a parts per million reading in the reservoir above uh, 200, I will uh, change it. But um, if, it's, if it's under 200 and the pH is alright, I, uh, I just put them back. I don't flush them. And that suits me, and I think, as we can see, it suits the orchids as well. And I do the same for every orchid. But like I said, I barely have I, I yeah I barely have any salt salt built up because I keep it on the low side. I check it on a regular basis every three months, like I said. And uh, if they need a flush, if I de if they have a salt salt built up, I will give them flush. If they don't need it, I do not. So I have a customized self watering system going on. I made a video about it. That's how I called it. I didn't know a better name for it, but. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in that, just uh, please check it out. And like I said, I will have a link in the, in the video. Um, what more? Yeah, obviously I grow them inorganically. Sometimes some lecca, most of the time pomace. Um, I change the media sometimes, so you see different uh, kinds of media in the pot. And you also saw some Cintiq. Because they uh, have uh, small roots, so therefore they need not... Need not uh, much air around the roots, those big air gaps, which you will get with uh, the bigger lecca and the bigger pumice. So I like to uh, put in some smaller pumice or some Cintiq, if needed. If needed, I mean, uh, you don't want too much, but uh, you don't want uh, those holes in there. I think you get the point. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and as usual, if you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comment section below. I'm happy to answer them. And, uh, yeah, I'm thinking of, I can mention something more, no, I, I can't, I think I covered all. So I'm really looking forward to the other videos, I try to watch them all, because um, uh, I know there's quite a list, obviously. So I don't know if I can uh, watch every video, and eventually I will. So other growers, thank you so much for uh, giving us uh, your care as well. 
And like I said, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. And for now, I just want to say thank you for watching. And uh, soon I will do an update uh, also on this one. Hopefully when it's fully in bloom. So I hope to see you uh, back then as well. Bye-bye.